Oh, hey there! Welcome to my Gothic Grotto. Today I want to show you some of my crochet projects, past and present, that have more of a spiritual, magical connection, or have more of a connection to my path as a pagan and a witch, or just have some sort of sacred magical meaning. So if that sounds fun, because to me it does, come on into my Gothic Grotto and let's hang, hang out. I have coffee, you know, grab some coffee, tea, juice, whatever, and I'll see you in a, um, in a minute. Watch me weave the light into ribbons of rainbow. So my name is Thorn. I use he, him, his. I'm trans, as you may have guessed from this garment. <laughs> Welcome to my channel if you're new, or welcome back if you're not new, but I know for a fact I have several new viewers since I last filmed, so thanks. I'm really happy to have have you here. So, right, I'm starting with my older projects, so I can sort of go in order, because there are a lot. <laughs> I've been doing this devotional pagan witchy crochet thing for a long time, so... Right, I was going to start with what I'm wearing. This one's pretty obvious. It's a witch hat, which I just kind of freehanded one Halloween because I realized I don't have anything to wear for Halloween. Oh no. I ended up getting commissioned by two pagan friends for hats like this, and there's still no pattern. I, I just kind of looked at this and figured out what I, what I did here, basically, and then did something, and they seem happy with it. I'm gonna take this off since I'm done talking about it. <laughs> so I included this one because even though it wasn't specifically spiritual or witchy at the time, I mean I was but I wasn't thinking of it that way, this particular project, um, I consider my queerness very interlinked with my spirituality, especially in times when I have to fight to be myself or to be accepted or seen. And sadly, this was one of those times, so I dealt with that by sitting in the back of the car on a long road trip and making a trans pride cape. I I know I used a pattern, or a couple different patterns for various parts of it. I, I'll try to link the patterns that I can remember. Um, I don't remember the yarn for this one, it was a long time ago, but... One of them was like a butterfly prayer shawl, and that was the base pattern for this. So I decided to to do that one be because it just felt very fitting with the butterfly transformation trans thing that c com coming out of your chrys chrysalis to be your true self. So, and I think I have have it on backwards. It's I was going to take it off anyway to show you the back. It goes down to a nice point there. Um, but yeah, the the butterflies are supposed to have this, the, the, the body stitch in front. Um, and after the, fir the first pink stripe, I got bored. Um, turned out years later, I have had ADHD this whole time, so it explains some things. But anyway, so I went and looked for some lace. Actually, I think first I just made made up some lace, and then eventually, as you can see, I did I did a shell pattern for a while. Then I was like, you know, I'm I'm gonna go find a lace edging pattern, and I did that for the last stripe. I really love lace, especially edging patterns, so. I tend to just go look for those if I need one for, for a project. There is no chance that I will be able to find which one it was, but I might be able to reconstruct the pattern just by looking at this, because um, apparently that's a skill I have I'm finding out recently. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. So right, before I show you my gauntlets, just so I can go in chronological order, I'm going to show you one of the things that I crocheted the most in my early years of crocheting. Little bags. And these are witchy 
because I use them for tarot and oracle decks like this one, or just random sacred magical trinkets like this one. And this was my first foray into color work. I was really proud of it at the time, and I still am, but looking at it now, I can tell that I... This was before I knew that you're supposed to change colors before you finish the last stitch. So there's a little trail where the working loop is still the previous color, and then the working loop becomes part of the next stitch. So... Apparently color work is one of my specialties now, with the pixel art graph cams that I will be talking about a little bit later. But not yet. <laughs> Alright, now we can talk about my gauntlets. I'm trying to think how to talk about this. It... I don't know if I need a trigger warning, because I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm, I'm a survivor of a, um, um, abusive marriage, so I was... I, I knew I, I had to get out of there, and I, w and, and I made several projects that had various spiritual or almost like pro protective and self-affirming meanings while I was there. And these are one of them. They, ha they have kind of a weird... They, they have kind of a weird accidental association with heart... Harley Quinn, because I was looking for gauntlets and I just happened to find a pattern on Ravelry that was based on her gauntlets from the Birds of Prey movie, I think. Yeah. And that was also the last movie I saw with my ex. <laughs> I don't dislike the superhero genre, but I'm not that into it. But for some reason, the character of Harley Quinn keeps showing up for me. And so, as you can see, I did change these a bit from the pattern, but I started with the a pattern that was supposed to supposed to look like her her gauntlets in the movie, and this is the pattern I was working on when I left. They they became weirdly entangled with the whole situation, and then soon after I left, I had a dream where Har Harley Quinn showed up and was my 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 friend in the midst of that situation where I, I knew I had to leave this dangerous sit situation but I had someone who was there with me and who got it and then when I woke up the thing you have to know about me besides me being a witch and a pagan I'm a poly polytheist my patron god is Gwen Apneed. I know him by several other names based on my personal Ex experience and what we call gnosis in the pagan com community, but that's the the main one. So he's a Welsh and Brythonic god. Um, in Welsh folklore, he's the fairy king, or I know him as the the Lord of Anun, the the Welsh Otherworld, and 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 I'm also a god god spouse which means i'm in a sacred marriage with him kind kind of like how nuns are sometimes said to be married to G jesus like i'm it's not exactly like that but kind of that that's that's the closest comparison i can make in a relatively quick amount of time so so anyway he's relevant to this story because he's always relevant to my to my life but but the Harley Quinn story, because I've realized that he shows up in my dreams a lot in dis disguise, and then I realize it's him when I wake up. And I woke up and was like, wait a minute. That that was Gwen. <laughs> and I, I can tell the story at some point later, but it was funny how I realized he didn't hardly have to act when he was her especially when he did the thing in the dream where where he dropped the happy silly facade and immediately had a soul piercing insight about what was going on with my psych psychology because Harley Quinn and my patron god Gwen both do that <laughs> so that's that was fun so these are important to me for that whole collection of reasons 
I am going to take them off now, though, because I want to keep track of how many things I've talked about, because there are quite a few things. So many things. Let's just go ahead and continue with the things I made while I was in that situation. Um, this is a dragon wing shawl, which I found the pattern on Ravelry. And I can't find it again, but I'll, I'll look again, and if I see a pattern that looks like it was the one, I'll link it. I do know it was in, like, it was in English, but there was also, like, a German version or a um, Germanic language, I think, <laughs> the pattern was also in. So I made this because both Gwen and the the unrecorded goddess who I know as Gwyn's mother in the Brythonic Welsh context. And un unrecorded means that we're not saying that there's evidence for her in the written text. Like, this is personal spiritual experiences that we've had that have, where we believe that she's come to us as a, as a goddess that maybe used to be known, but we just don't have a written record of. She and Gwyn both have kind of a dragon aspect, at least for me and for several other modern-day devotees of theirs. And I associate the mother goddess, who I sometimes call Serpent Mother, or her her name in Welsh that she's given to us is um, An Anrina. So I associate her with the color red and, and, and also black. So I, that's why I used this very vivid red yarn for her or for the dragon wing shawl that's um, devotional to her and her son, my, my, my patron god, Gwyn. And this is stash yarn. I, basically all of these older projects, I'm not going to know what yarn I used because I never used to really pay attention to that. So, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> it is all acrylic, I'm pretty sure. If that helps. <laughs> and the last thing I made that I'm showing you during that time is my woodland pride scarf. I say woodland because the colors look kind of woodland there in this muted rainbow, which is just perfect. This was one skein and it's just about long enough for a scarf, at least if I wear it kind of kind of tie it at my neck. I don't tend to wear scarves often, but I do love this one. The other reason I say woodland is because I think that was the pattern of this lace, but I'll check to see if I can um, find out for sure. Here's a little close-up. Hopefully that works. Oh, and it's kind of cool that I was making this this pride-themed scarf um, at the time because my friend was doing a queer pagan pride. So a pride for people who are both queer and pagan. And it was an on online ev um, event. It was awesome. They're doing it again this this year, so I'm excited about that. Ooh, and I get I get to um, do a workshop presentation this time, which is the first time I've ever done one of these. Oh, and this is a this is an all on online event, so which is nice because it's very accessible. So I'll probably be talking about the same thing I'm talking about right right now, the intersection of like sp sp spirituality, magic, witchcraft, and crochet, which is my jam. We're coming up on more recent crochet projects. I almost said knits because I, I watched a lot of knitting channels and my mom knits, but like it's it's not knits. <laughs> so this skull shawl, uh, the the skulls are in the lace. 
Um, then there are snowflakes, which I attach to the bottom. They're... Someone called them melted snowflakes, and not not being mean, and um, j just like being um, um, accurate. Because <laughs> I've tried to block them, but they don't really stay. I would need to bleach them or something, probably. Not. I don't know if it's bleach or that that thing you do to stiffen fabric. It's probably not bleach, but anyway. But I don't want to do that because it's very soft right now, so. This is a devotional prayer and journeying, like astral traveling shawl for my patron god. Because for me, at least, he has associations with death and winter. So skulls and snowflakes, that's that's him. And this, this was all stash yarn that I had. I think this came... It would have either come from Joann's or Michael's, the little um, clasp. There. I I hope that works, but I can't see my camera when I'm covering up my face to make it focus, so um, it, it's a learning curve. So... Right, and the colors, I think I said this is stash yarn, but so I don't know what yarn it was. <laughs> but the colors, um, white, red, and black, and I guess a, a, a little bit of silver gray, are all colors that are heavily associated with him, especially white and red being very otherworld associated colors, I think, in Welsh folklore and li li literature. By the way, I said, um, I mentioned the word Brythonic earlier, and that means pre Roman Britain, which is basically a larger, older version of the culture that Wales is now. So, at least that's, that's my understanding. Um, Welsh or British friends, like, please, um, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Wales is kind of the descendant of the pre-Roman, uh, of of the Britain that was there before the Roman invasion. And I'll go ahead and show you a whip I have going on, um, which is the same pattern as that. I'll 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 link it down below. It's it's in a it's on a finished blog. Um, it's not the Lost Souls skull shawl pattern for some reason i didn't find that one or i was looking for this one before i'm not sure how old the lost souls one is but i was looking for this in like 2020 that's when i made it so the only one i could find was this finish pattern which is beautiful but it's it's a different one than most people know for the skull lace pattern anyway I'm doing one for a friend for a commission, which is nice. Um, and this friend is devoted to Hades, different death god. So they also wanted a skull shawl for him in black and teal. So it's coming along nicely. And I do actually know the yarn for this one, because I helped her pick it out. Um, Lion Brand Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling. Because I figured it'd be nice to have a good sturdy yarn for for both me and her, for, for both me to work with and her to use. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the idea of, oh, you know, my... my my Hades skull shawl is put to is is put to rigorous use. It really has to stand up to hard wear and tear. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just laughing at the at the concept. See, one one thing about paganism and witchcraft is like just having fun with it and like not in a disrespectful way, just like in a de um de delightful way. My other scarf. 
My other scarf is actually a sneck and is for the same serpent mother goddess of Gwyn. Um, I know her in a couple different contexts. I, like my spiritual path has, path has a couple different branches. There's the Welsh Chthonic one, then the one that's in the tradition known as modern Minoan paganism, which I'll also link some links about that. And there she's known as the Serpent Mother. And so I made a snack amigurumi for her. Again, I don't wear scarves very often, but I, I just felt like I needed this one. So usually she hangs out on my bed, which has a, a railing, because it's a day bed, sort of. And she, she, she just hangs out like it's a tree branch and just like keeps, keeps watch, which is nice because I'm not going to go into depth about my living situation, but currently, um, I'm happy to have every, all the help watching over me that I can get. Also, the yarn is sparkly. Yes, the black yarn. Right. I do know the yarn for this too. Um, the black yarn is Karen's Simply Soft Party Yarn, I think. And the red yarn is Karen Simply Soft, just like red or something. Actually, there are two types of black yarn. One's thinner and one's thicker. One of them is Simply Soft Party. The other one is, I think, a might be a Joann's brand. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, yes, I have multiple types of sparkly black yarn. Why, why wouldn't I? Let's continue the trend of neckwear. This is probably the most difficult thing I've ever made because it was made with crochet thread. And let me just show you how intricate it is. And there are beads and wire. And yeah, it's, it's a lot. I love it, but wow. And I would love to make more of these. <laughs> this this is my aesthetic in a nutshell, basically. Um, and I made this as a part of my um, private initiatory cer ceremony, kind of, that I did in one part of my spiritual path. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you the name of the path. It's the Vicaro, and I can link a book written by my fellow, um, by my chosen brother and fellow initiate down in the comments below, which <laughs> conveniently enough is also titled v Vicaro. I've been on that path for about one year, and um, I made this as part of the part of my ritual rare ritual wear. Speaking of Vicaro things, I didn't wear this during that ceremony, but this has become one of the things I'm going to be wearing in my I don't know priestly duties kind of, but it's not exactly I, I don't I don't think that word is quite correct, but I don't know. <laughs> it's a modern in interpretation of a path we think existed in the ancient a pagan world, and there aren't really words that fit exactly, so bear, bear with me. But anyway, this is a wrap skirt based on the frescoes at Knossos on um, Minoan Crete, because that's, that's where the Vicaro path is kind of centered. Or, or at least, um, there are only two living, the, um, Vicaro initiates that I know of. Um, my brother who wrote the book and I have both been called to that path which neither of us were expecting but you know the gods have certain ideas but like the stories of what we know of the path 
has received partly through spiritual channels like conversations with gods and spirits and partly through looking at the historical record to see if we can correlate anything but um anyway that's based in minoan bronze age crete so anyway and the other inspiration was paleolithic cave art that was the first bit of the puzzle i had i was like yeah i just need to make something that looks like cave art so i made this panel <laughs> with the the lines that crisscross and as you can see i got really into the color work um several of the sections are based on different kilt type garments not exactly kilts but like wrap skirts that you see the the guys in the frescoes wearing especially this one i'm really proud of this one like it's pretty close to how one of the the patterns on one of the garments looks and the red blue and gold is just very knossos then i did some lace at the bottom including this rainbow lace which it was meant to look like a line of birds like here's their their heads and bodies and tails and then their wings and they each share a wing but then it ended up looking like people dancing and given my spiritual path and some of the gods i follow that's very fitting the kind of ambiguity between birds or people dancing and most of that yarn was in my stash or in the stashes of friends that they gifted it that, that they gifted to me no idea where most of it comes from <laughs> the same is not true for this wrap skirt which is based on a version of like the pineapple lace pattern i sort of altered it a bit then i added a border with other colors besides the blue this one is it is connected to my vicaro path but it's specifically kind of in devotion to this one goddess that i i call her sun sun mom because she, to me she's the sun like in the sky and also a mother goddess t to me but i also know her as um in inanna and for me she's also the goddess known as te te terasia or the sun mother in the modern minoan pagan pan pantheon and i see blue as being sacred to her so um anyway i i made this um for i i kind of made this for her i don't really know what else to say about it but it's it's a cool project and i'm happy with it and i look forward to doing witchy things with it <laughs> last vicaro related project i think is my cardigan it's my first cardigan and my first granny square project and the construction was based on the pattern by kayla from alt knots i did create my own granny square and i added the shoulder insets because i felt like the sleeves as i had them were too tight so just wanted a bit more room in the armhole and i i added the the borders at the sleeves and around the neck and front this is a project that i'm really happy with it's really comfortable and i'm happy that i know how to work with granny squares now i feel like it helped me learn more about garment construction because cons construction is kind of my weak point that i want to work on for reasons that i'll go into a bit more later but i am hoping to make wearable patterns 
myself someday. So yeah, and it just feels very like connected to something really important to me and like I'm being true to myself when I wear this because I did make it as to be very symbolic of my um the Vicaro path. Oh right, and the yarn that I used for this was Karen Simply Soft in black and I think red like worsted weight. So right, now I have a couple of a couple of projects based on patterns that I'm hoping to sell. So a couple of these are Grafgan or wall hanging type tapestry cr crochet. I think that's the general term. Anyway, they're crochet I've, cre I've created from my pixel art and I, I'm I'm putting charts of those in my um, Etsy shop, Thirst Pixels, which I'll link down below. I, I'm not sure whether I can show the full thing, but my my work doesn't in, does include some art some artistic nudity. So just warning for that. But this one's based on the Bi Pride flag. I used yarn from my stash so the colors aren't all, um, they don't really pop as being by pride as um, associated the way I think they hopefully do in the chart pattern. I was going to say written pattern but I'm not sure what the chart equivalent is. It's one of these grass things. <laughs> I was taking pictures outside and there's like grass seeds in these. They they were on a blanket, but the grass gets everywhere. So like the border would be by pride colors, um, but I used variegated yarn for the blue and I didn't have any purple, so I used like this dark gray held together with a strand of red crochet thread but I I am happy with how it came out so I, I have another much bigger blanket sized one of a different chart a mer mermaid and oh I forgot to say which I, I forgot to say why these are like witchy or magical but it's hard to put into words but like a lot of them are inspired by things that I consider sacred sacred if not my actual gods um like my stories or my experiences as a queer person or even just my personal style and b because to me like expressing myself and affirming my sense of beauty even just in like goth clothing just is really Im important to me so anyway the other Grafgan. She's a giant mermaid. Oh. Gonna slowly lower her. <laughs> She's a giant mermaid. I hope that you could hear me behind the blanket, but it's really soft. And this one is made from yarn I got for this project. Yay, business expenses. Red Heart, Premier Yarns, and Big Twist. Then I'm planning a second one in a different pattern, which is of my patron, Quinn, which also uses those yarns, except no Premier Yarn, I think, just Big Twist and Red Heart in his case. But there were so many colors for this one, I needed to look at a lot of different brands. <laughs> oh right, the lace border, not te technically part of the, sh the um, chart, but I recently did a tutorial on this in my previous video that showcases this 
border lace. And I said in that video that it was pretty quick to work up, and it it is. I mean, I, I, I was thinking, well, maybe it's just because it was such a short sample, but I did find that this one was not too bad, and the sides did like the long sides of the of the rectangle did feel like they they took forever <laughs> but it wasn't too bad okay last set of things i have three wearables that i'm working on designing patterns for they're all with the idea of me loving that style of shirt that's like the poet pirate shirt with the flowy sleeves that gather at the wrist and the open v-neck that laces up, but I don't like to sew. So I was like, well, can I crochet a pattern like that? And not only will it help me, but maybe other people will like it too. So this is one of the versions of a similar pattern. Um, I'm calling this one sacred sacred moment because I was working on it a lot during a trip up to my uh, up to visit my chosen brother and the place where I will hopefully live soon but it, it, it just felt like a really sacred time because I was going there for witchy pagan reasons. I had fun picking the stitch that I used I think this is the post and shell stitch and then I'm also doing some doing some diamond lace here in the shoulder tab and like a the shoulder tab the the shoulder part um I'm I'm ex I'm experimenting with different styles of cons construction for for this this one I did this, the front panel from the bottom up, and then I'm doing the shoulder panel this way, kind of sideways. So I'll probably be doing another draft of all of these just to make sure that it's not too weird in terms of con con construction, because I, I, I do want my patterns to be to make sense and be easy to follow like i they they are going to be for people that want something a bit more in um they um a, a bit more a bit more intricate cuz that's what i like just lace and fancy things but i don't want them to be confusing or unnecessarily complicated and i have two more wearables in that vein. I forgot to tell you, the the previous yarn, I believe it's Karen Simply Soft in white. And this one is Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick in Celebration. And I think it's called Celebration because a car just went by. I think it's called Celebration because it not only, it like it, it's a bulky white yarn, but it has these little so, um, silvery iridescent rainbow sparkly strands which I, I like and I was going to make it a a shirt at first but then I realized I can't wear this against my skin because I have sensory issues so this is the front panel so this is going to be a vest like a renaissance style doublet maybe I'm not sure what the term is I just know what I want it to look like so stay tuned for that and then I have one more. Here's the back panel and one of the front panels, which I've sewn together, but they're a bit unwieldy, so I'll just show you this other front panel. I learned cabling and it's really fun. So this is another shirt. I haven't done the sleeves yet, but oh yeah, this, this is the armhole and it's going to slant down and then like lace up in a v-neck and I'm calling this one pumpkin moonlight because it's orange and I feel like the cabling texture looks like a pumpkin and I wanted I wanted it to have kind of a sp spooky name I feel like this part 
which is a V stitch, I think, could look like, or it, it could kind of represent the leafless, bare branches of the trees ab above the Halloween pump, pump, pumpkin patch. Then you see the moonlight. Um, you see the moon above that. So I wanted it to all kind of have a theme. I don't know what yarn this is because I was trying to de-stash de and I had several balls of like giant balls of orange yarn. It looks kind of like Karen Simply Soft, but I, c I could be wrong. Then I ran out and had to use a few other colors that look pretty close. I mean, they don't look close to this, but they 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 work with it, I think. And I'll probably do the sleeves in this sparkly black yarn, which I think is Karen Simply Soft Party in Black. Party yarn, black colorway. <laughs> Party in Black is what we do at the goth club. I haven't been to a goth club in years, but I used to go quite a bit. Okay, well, that's all of the witchy, pagan crochet projects that I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and chatting. You can find all the things I've mentioned down in the um, dis description box below below. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Thornwing Crochet. Um, if you want to know more about my pagan witchy path, I do have a podcast on my other channel, the Midnight Ballroom pod Podcast, where I talk a lot about that. Um, then I'll, I'll put my link tree down with all the other places to find me. So yeah, leave a comment and let me know if you've ever made a crochet project or some other crafting project that you feel is connected to your um, spirit spirituality or some sort of profound meaning it, it, doesn't, it doesn't doesn't have to be spiritual but i would um love to hear from you thanks to all my yarn witches fiber goths and crochet gays for hanging out with me in my gothic grotto and i will see you next time to your eyes where her car